Welcome to another edition of Faith Moments with Dina Marie, and I am so excited to share with you a little bit about the joy of the summer season in Beaverton, Oregon. The sisters at Our Lady of Peace Retreat in Beaverton have put together for 47 years their institute in Catholic teaching, and this year it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be an online Catholic retreat. And so people from anywhere across the globe that can get online can join us for this four day online retreat. And we're going to have amazing international and local speakers to share throughout those four days of July 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th. And with me today is one of the local speakers who will be providing an afternoon lecture, and that's Rolando Moreno. And I've known Rolando before he came to the Archdiocese and working with our Office of Catechesis and Faith Formation, working with St. Joseph's in Salem, which is his home parish, and raising those wonderful kids of yours it has been a beauty for us to see you grow in the faith. Uh, background at Steubenville and comes to our, our universe, or I guess our, our archdiocese to bring your background in the love of the faith and authentic faith, a genuine faith into looking deeper into our faith. And you're going to bring some of that to the retreat. So thanks for joining us today, Rolando. Oh, you're welcome, Dina Marie. I'm, I'm happy to be here. It's, it's a pleasure to, to be a part of the uh, Summer Institute for the Sisters. Well, we're, we're into the beginning of summer almost in June, and I know since about March, everything has changed. Our whole viewpoint of family life, of parish life, of work life, of community life, even in our own neighborhoods has really changed due to this coronavirus, but that doesn't stop us to worship God to love our neighbor and to love our community. And I wanna just ask you for, in terms of the pastoral center, your office of catechesis and faith formation, you know, what have been the ways that you all as a community have responded in using online technology to continue to reach out to the parishes, to our faith formation leaders, people in religious education, our RCIA teams, you know, you still in the pastoral center have that, have that support how have you really reached out to use that technology to support our parishes? Yeah, I, I'm, it's been uh, an interesting, um, certainly learning curve in some ways. Uh, we we had uh, we had Zoom um, because of the late uh, the the size of the Archdiocese of Portland. You know, where the pastoral center is always all the way to the north, and we we serve uh, down to Ashland, which is pretty much the California border. So it's a, a huge area to serve. So we've had um, the Zoom platform so that we could continue or we could be in contact with uh, parish leaders from afar. So that's something we were using prior to the uh, COVID-19, but um, it's taken on a even greater significance as, as you can imagine for all of us. Um, we've done just uh, reaching out to parish leaders. I think that was our first thing once we were able to regroup in, in as a pastoral ministries department and get our heads wrapped around how to respond effectively to to the pastors, to the to the parish leaders out there who, you know, who have to shut everything down and, and try to continue some semblance of of solid and good ministry. It's it was a challenge, I think it's a challenge for everybody. Um particularly because ministry is very relational and it's very human. Uh it's something that, you know, it, it works best uh, you know, not necessarily in the virtual platform, although that is an important uh element to it and it's it's much needed especially today as we're still distant but um so we were able just to kind of reach out to these folks start hosting uh, some meetings i did some some personal or some out of the office of catechesis i should say some meetings with parish catechetical leaders uh checking in with them a lot of individual meetings through zoom and also just phone calls um seeing how these folks are doing and then providing some resources uh that they could use uh, to f fill out the rest of um, the remainder of the catechetical year, so to speak. So it was uh, it was a challenge, but I think um, there was a lot of our, our leaders were, were ready to face that challenge. They were able to to kind of keep things going, and I think the most important thing that they did was simply reach out to the people that they serve in the parishes and and connect with them, let them know that they're still here, that or that they're there for them, that they're praying for them, that there's still contact. So. It was, uh, I think they've, a lot of our parishes did a nice job. Some of them needed some, a little bit of, of help with, you know, going the technological route through Zoom and hosting some catechetical sessions through Zoom. Um, we had some RCIA uh, groups, you know, continue that ministry through through Zoom. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, it, and for us, our end, just trying to help them get connected and, you know, go over some, even some basics. I think there's some on our team who are able to help people connect z with Zoom if they've never done that before. So it really got um, kind of basic, but at the same time, I think it drew people together in an interesting way. And then just, yeah, so it was, it's been positive, although challenging. Yeah, as, as all these things are, but it is so important that we do work together. How do we share our gifts and talents and continuing to reach out? And I think reminding us that a phone call and just that voice to voice has been so important to people to hear the voice of a parishioner, of a, of a pastor calling and checking in. I mean, just that we can reach out and touch people in different ways is so important. So um, we're going to continue to move through this positively and, you know, as God wills it, we'll continue to move forward. I'm glad that you were willing to say yes and to stay connected with this retreat this year and that the sisters were willing to use technology and say, okay, we want people to come at Our Lady of Peace retreat, but this year that's not gonna be possible with the physical distancing we need to maintain. Uh, but you're gonna come out on, I wanna say Tuesday afternoon for the afternoon lecture. And I just wanna put up the schedule for people to see because uh -huh. if I can get it out here really quick, I hope so, yes, let's see. The schedule is, is exciting because there are different talks. So our friends Steve Bray and Father John Horrigan will each be offering four talks during those four days. But then we've got these afternoon lectures. On Monday, it'll be Steve Ray. On Tuesday, excuse me, on Tuesday, it'll be you, Rolando, uh, doing mm -hmm. an afternoon lecture at one o'clock. And, uh, and then Julian Durko, one of our other local speakers, will be talking on Thursday afternoon. Mm -hmm. And again, Father John on Wednesday. But I want to just highlight a little bit about what you're going to be sharing because I love this title, The Way of the Disciple, Life Under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And as we look at things have really changed for how we look at things, you know, some things never change. And we know the love of God, who Jesus Christ is and who we belong to. That doesn't change with a virus. That doesn't change with regulations. Who Jesus is, his power, his blood, his forgiveness, um, that does not change. And we need to stay focused, I think. And that might be one of the gifts of your talk. B, let's get yes, down yes. to basics of how we live as true Christians. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, that, you know, this, the idea of discipleship, um, I mean, the, it goes back to, to Christ. I mean, he is the author of discipleship. I mean, he's the one who showed us how to disciple. Um, it's interesting in the Great Commission of Matthew 28 that, you know, so go, go therefore make disciples of all nations. And it's the first thing that Jesus says, you know, go and make disciples. Then it goes on to say, you know, teach and, and baptize, baptize and teach all that I have taught you. Um, so, you know, in this time of the church where we're, whether it's through this pandemic or um, just in general, there's this, there's a real need for uh, this authentic discipleship and becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ. Um, now, to think of ourselves in that way, and this is what I've been um personally intrigued by for, for the last number of years is just reflecting in my own life of, am I a disciple of Jesus Christ? Can I, can I say that with, um, with confidence and also with, with fear and trembling in a certain sense where, uh, what does it mean to say that? What does it mean to, to truly take on the yoke of Christ? Um, and so the, you know, my thought was just to, to kind of go back to those basics of, am I really following? Because this is everything for for the, you know, for the continued work of salvation in the world through our Lord is that he needs, uh, he, he works through his imperfect instrument, myself and, and others, uh, to bring about the good news. But I, I also, I have to begin to run the race, as St. Paul says, I have to be one who is living that authentic discipleship in my own relationship with the Lord through the church, through the sacraments. And so, um, that, that's for me, it was just the, the beginning of always going back to the beginning when those first a couple of apostles are called. Um, and um, when they said yes to come follow him, it meant everything. Everything was going to change. Everything about their life was going to be different from that yes. And it will be a continued series of yeses, as we see from the disciples, from the apostles, as they struggle through spending three years with our Lord, seeing all the miracles, hearing all of the discourses, seeing the healings and and the deliverance of, of folks from, from oppression. Um, and yet they needed the power of the Holy Spirit. 
to be an authentic disciple. So, you know, act the, what happens in, in, you know, in the beginning chapters of Acts of the Apostles is necessary for the disciple to be able to receive the Holy Spirit so that they can continue the work of the Lord in the world. So I just, I want to reflect on that. Um, and it, for me, it's just a personal uh, topic that I, I find intriguing. I'm asking myself all the time. Um, and, uh, and, and maybe it, it can be a value for those who are, whatever their vocation, whether they're in a teaching ministry or not, but as parents, you know, that's my first uh, vocation, my first uh, front, if you will, of where I need to live authentic discipleship. And also, our, do parents see themselves as, the two, as two disciples within their own home? Uh, or even if you're a single parent, am I a disciple of Jesus Christ in my own home to these children? Right? Am I discipling these children? To be followers of Christ too. So we pass on this method that Christ the Master himself uh, emulated and modeled for us, and it will always be effective. It will never not be effective. Uh, so it's something that's ever ancient and never new. Um, so the need for authentic discipleship. Yeah. yeah. Rolando Moreno is with us, and he will be one of the afternoon lectures at the Sisters 47th Annual Institute in Catholic Teaching. This is a free four-day Catholic online retreat, and so this is being provided by the Sisters at Our Lady of Peace Retreat. It would have been where you could pay to come and to stay overnight and to enjoy all the beautiful meals and the hospitality, but this year we're not going to do that. We're going to keep everybody safe, but we can actually open this up, I think, to more people. And at this moment, we're looking at having a goal of 100 attendees because that's kind of the first level of Zoom. But, you know, we can go beyond that, and as many people who want to register online free can do so at ourladyofpeace.org. It's O L retreat.org and Rolando I think you know with your idea of discipleship and that mention it is husbands and wives college students eighth graders graduating into high school our sisters our religious brothers our priests those who are retired those who are business owners those who um, are widows we all are disciples of Christ and so we have to listen to where is God calling me right now in my vocation and it is to be grounded, like you say, Christocentric. That means we're grounded in Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's <clears throat> and so this this idea of, of Christocentricity or Christocentric. Am I living a Christocentric life, a Christ-centered life? Um, am I placing every element of my life uh, through the grace of God under the lordship of Jesus Christ? Am I allowing Him to be Lord of my life? You know, allowing Him to reign in my life and put an end to the reign of sin. Um, now, this all happens through, through, the, for, through God's grace, but we need, um, we, you know, we, we are asked to make a response of faith, an act of the will. And all of, you know, how we learn and our encounter with the Lord and through sacramental grace, and, and we, we're able to begin to continue on a road of conversion. So really, you know, placing our, I think this is something that will be with us our whole life. It's not as if, you know, I've, I've arrived and once I do this, everything will be fine. No, it's a continued yes. Um, it's something that stays with us to our, through our last breath, you know, as we know that the importance of the last hour of our life, you know, through the, through the rosary, through the Hail Mary, to be with us, Lord, even in that hour where I may face great temptation. So the disciple's life doesn't, doesn't end. In fact, it, once as you can say, continues on even in you know, in, in the life to come, where we will hopefully be of intercessory prayer to those here on earth. Um, so yeah, that, that was, that was my, uh, my thought. I, I've, one of the things I've, I've sort of tried to emphasize with the, with parish leaders in, through the office of catechesis is the, the importance of their discipleship, their importance of their own seeking holiness of life. That is going to be the, the, uh, the catalyst I would think for help, you know, for having our ministries fruitful. Um, so if I'm not seeking holiness uh, in, you know, first and foremost, I, I think the rest of it is it's just not as vibrant. It's not as strong. Um, so we have to be these people who are all on the path of, of discipleship, walking always closer to Christ. Absolutely. It is, um, yeah. It, you know, and it's a pleasure to, to be part of this uh, retreat with the sisters. Um, you know, they've, they've done great work over the years, and uh, I'm just honored to be a part of it, to play a small role in, in, in you know, trying to share some reflections. And uh, but So I, I'm very grateful that, that they even they asked me to be a part of it. So. 
Well, we're grateful that you're part of it. Before we close, I just want to show people the website for the sisters. And I know soon we'll be able to actually come to this place because, I mean, in Beaverton, this is just a little lush area of peace in the midst of the city and the max and all the transportation look at that beauty of our lady of peace retreat and pray for the sisters you know they want to provide a place for people to grow in holiness a place for families to come a place for men and women to come in time of of need of rest of just rejuvenating after uh, maybe spending some time homeschooling and we just need a break this is where the sisters want to provide a place of rest and when you come to the website and get to experience the sisters just go down to this link. It's an Eventbrite link. It's a free registration to get online and to register for all four days of the event. We'd love to have you join us and be part of the Franciscan Missionary Sisters. They're praying for you and they really want you to grow as Rolanda, as you mentioned, in holiness. So thanks for your um, willingness to come and to spend some time for the afternoon lecture. We'll look forward to seeing you there vir virtually through Zoom. And Rolando, mm -hmm. God bless you and your family as you continue you enjoy the summer season and we'll look forward to talking with you in the in the future thank you Dina Marina appreciate it god bless and have a great day all right thanks all right okay yay <laughs> thank you my friend you're welcome all right we'll have to do more of these I'm I'm kind of now I'm getting into the yeah that's getting great into the zoom. I got my little living room here I told yeah. Rob don't come home yet till like 11 and then <laughs> to be quiet in here <laughs> so awesome. okay yeah, all right well fun. stay well and um we'll talk to you soon all right thank you Dean Marie. Okay. God bless. thanks Rolando okay god bless <laughs>